round of 16 is complete, Champions League group phase is over and yeah, yesterday was kind of a down day in many ways because there was not too much to play for. Uh, for that reason I decided to actually go to bed early because I was wiped. I put the kids to bed shortly after 8 and I was the first one to fall asleep. I should tell you, I, I was... I, when it was clear that there will be an endgame between Schachtar and Lyon, I was actually looking forward to that. Uh, but you gotta take care of yourself sometimes. So. Uh, Liverpool, Napoli, or Schachtar, Lyon, Liverpool, Napoli means every time. So that was basically why I, I knew that. Because Tuesday in the morning, I actually planned to sleep a little bit longer and I was awake at 5. Sometimes I don't know myself. But let's look at the results from yesterday and what they mean. Um, the early games, this time I, re I really didn't pay, pay attention because that group was more or less decided. But the results uh, by themselves are quite uh, amazing in a way. You have Real Madrid losing to CSK Moscow or Ceseca. 3-0 at home, 2-0 at halftime. When I saw the result, that, that, that was the one thing I uh, checked. When I saw that result, uh, I immediately had to check the lineup. And yes, it was, uh, I don't want to say it was a second string lineup. There was Blaise Bozema, there was Courtois, but it was not the first team squad of Real Madrid. Still, you can't lose 3 nil to uh, Tessica. Um, for Tessica, they needed a win and they needed that uh, Pilsen doesn't do anything against Roma. Um, and so they went up 2 0 at halftime, then uh, it was 3 0. Um, then Pilsen uh, took a lead, Roma equalized, and Pilsen got uh, again the lead 2 1. It ends, all goes in the second half. And so Pilsen is through to the Europa League. Very very interesting results. If you look at the group, you, th you might think it was a really tight group. It never was, but you know, with those two results, the two minos get a total of six points and the group finishes uh, Real with 12. Kind of disappointing, honestly. Roma 9 also, and then uh, Pilsen and uh, Jessica with seven points. Uh, uh, an amazingly dull group looks very interesting at the end. Um, then, of course, let's go to the big game before we do the others. Um, Schachter Lyon uh, played in the snowfall in Kiev. That means orange ball, which means you don't see it as well, that, that well unless, of course, this is played on a, a snowy pitch and the pitch wasn't snowy. It was a green pitch and all, even the lines were orange. Uh, I understand why they do it, and maybe since Schacht is playing in orange and black, maybe they're even more so. Uh, although I don't think this has any anything to do with it. Um, if it was, that would actually will be cool. But for the TV or audience, it's not much that, that you that, that, that they can write home about, and it's hard to see. It was, of course, a shock that needed me to win in Lyon uh, with a fifth draw in a row would have would make it to the uh, sec uh, round of 16. And it started out with Lyon being dominant all over the place, missing chance after chance, and then how, off, how it often goes, Moresh makes it 1 0 for Schachter. Um, and then the same game continues, except for uh, Schachter not making any more goals. But it was basically an onslaught of Lyon. I think they had at halftime 12 shots on goal and some really big misses. And uh, the Schachter had one shot on goal. Crazy, crazy stats. Um, Fekir made it 1-1 uh, um, in the second half. And I think there was a, there was hardly any chance for Schachter anymore. Maybe there was one little thing. Uh, where they could have made it 2-1, um, but I think Lyon was the better team and uh, an amazing group phase for Lyon. They win at City and then they only played Ross. 
and crazy draws most of the time. That group in itself is probably uh, not from the names, but from the games, for probably, for probably the most entertaining one. The other game, um, Hoffenheim, would have had a chance if um, Schachter loses. Uh, they of course didn't. And they win at City um, and they took the lead um, through a Kramaric penalty. Um, and then it was all City. And uh, again, similar to Lyon, City wasting chance after chance after chance. Uh, Sané makes, I think, a nice, really nice free kick goal. Um, and then that kind of killed off Hoffenheim a little bit. City went further, they had a big chance where there were three guys running to goal and there was only one Hoffenheim uh, player a little bit coming with them. It was basically three guys onto the goalie and they want to be cute. Uh, completely botched that, 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 that one they actually, well, actually made it to one. Uh, in the end, Sané made the 2-1 uh, shortly thereafter, and that ends the group. City 13, Lyon 8, again, one win, five draws, they're unbeaten. Um, Schachter has six, goes on to the Europa League, and Hoffenheim ends the first Champions League campaign at three points. Um, the game of the night, though, was neither in Manchester nor in Kiev, which is where the game, uh, the Schachter game was played due to a political conflict and all that kind of shit. Um, I know that Schachter has some trouble with their uh, stadium, which is a shame because that, that is a beautiful stadium that they have, and now because of the wars. Stadium in Donetsk uh, that's a great stadium. But the game of the night was played in Amsterdam between Ajax and Bayern. Uh, and it had its phases. I mean, uh, from the beginning, uh, Bayern tried to make pressure and they get the goal, early goal through Lewandowski, and then sort of sit back. And to be honest, if there was a little bit more at stake than um, if it's first or second place, I think I might have well gone for Ajax Bayern. Uh, let's say if Ajax would have needed a, a point or something like that, because it's such a classic game. Ajax Bayern, that really is a classic Champions League match. I don't think they've they played them each other that often. Uh, I remember in the 70s, I remember when Ajax won in 1995, there was a semi final. Maybe they have played since in the Champions League, but you know, uh, those are the memorable ones, at least for me. Uh, both cases, Ajax being on top, maybe that's why it's memorable. Anyway, uh, so Ajax has more of the game with Bayern just holding back and it continues in the second, into the second half. Uh, that way that um, Ajax is playing better. Uh, because Bayern is not playing fully. By the way, Bayern and are horrible Greek hits. Didn't like those. Ajax, Ajax, in Ajax colors. And so Tadic makes it, I think, around the 60th. I don't have another uh, really in mind. Uh, makes uh, it 1 1. And yeah, uh, one more goal for Ajax, and they are first in the group. And then came the weird phases. First came the red card phase, where first Mac Maximilian Weber from Ajax, uh, Austrian national team, sort of national team. I mean, he, he, he doesn't have a spot, but he's in the, at least in the extended squad. Makes a tackle uh, where he plays the ball, but similar to the Van Dijk tackle yesterday. Uh, very da dangerous, and in a way, yeah. That was a red card. Van Dijk probably was lucky to not get a red card there. Uh, the more I see it, that tackle was reckless. Yes, he gets the ball, but it's not only the ball. Uh, you would need to be a little bit smarter going in there. So Ajax is down to 10 men, and it was basically on the right 
mit viel uh, right hand center line uh, for Bayern, so it's closer to the TV cameras. And in pretty much at the very same spot, uh, Thomas Müller makes the stupid uh, tackle of the year with putting his foot so high that he just hits Talia Fico in his uh, cheek. Another red card. So it's even with red card. Next phase, we get the penalty phase. Uh, Ajax gets a, a penalty where Boateng completely does stupid, uh, stupid tackle in the box. There was no way that this was going to be really dangerous. Penalty for Ajax. Tadic makes it 2-1. Ajax in first place. I was thrilled when I saw the hand. I have to say I was not watching the game. <laughs> but I was thrilled. Uh, five, four minutes later, another stupid tackle. Lewandowski gets a pen penalty. Lewandowski scores 2 2. 90th minute. Kingsley Coleman makes it 3 2. Yeah. Don't want a Bayern to I mean, it doesn't really matter at that point. The only thing that would count was an Ajax victory. So, yeah, Kingsley Coleman makes it 3 2. But that was not all because in the last minute, uh, I haven't really solved it. I think it was established in 94, the sounds sound like it. Either Talia Finko or Sule make it 3-3. Um, Amazing game. I think it was from the beginning to the end. Uh, it was one of those games that were memorable if there was anything at stake to play for. Uh, yes, there was first place at stake, but these days Although I think we'll look at uh, this, 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 this year, it's probably you're really better off if you're in first place. I think. And then uh, Befica beats Ike late, so Ike has six consecutive defeats. Uh, Befica 1 0. So the group finishes Bayern 14 and Ajax 12, and I think this makes Ajax the best second place team out of them all. That group I loved from the teams that were in there. I know it's not the top of the table, uh, except maybe Bayern, but this is a classic European Cup Champions League group. Uh, three former winners, three teams that really made their mark in Europe, plus Ike, Athens, which is also was Greek, we are Greek champions, so you had an all champions group. That is something you just gotta enjoy and appreciate. So, great group. The last group, uh, so Benfica, I think, finished with seven points. And even if Benfica would have won against Ajax, their home game, uh, Ajax still wouldn't have made it because they uh, won. Uh, they um, got points against Bayern, which Benfica never managed to. And that proved to be one difference. The other difference is that Bayern won the two games against Benfica and Ajax only uh, won once and drew. And therefore, um, you have that Ajax. That's where Ajax lost a lot of the points, otherwise they probably would have matched by it. But the Benfica Ajax games were my personal highlights of the group stage. Those were two tightly fought great games. Last group, also very surprising, it's like the Real Roma group. eBay winning against Juve 2-1, uh, being 2-0 up at one point, and I think it's just late, Dybala makes a goal. But it didn't really matter because uh, it was 0 0 at halftime. At halftime, Valencia had a 1 0 lead over United, also extended to, to 2 0 and then uh, 1 2 1. United back. So the two qualified teams again lose, which means nothing really changes except that the group again looks much tighter than it ever was. Uh, you were 12, United 10, uh, Valencia 8, and Young Boys with 4 points. And that group was Juventus is all the way except the one freak loss to uh, Manchester. I think if I look at quickly the Italian teams, there was a lot of freak results happening actually against it. Uh, yes, you have two teams going on. Um, Roma is probably one of the teams that everyone will want to have out of the second pot. So uh, let's go through the group winners. This is uh, Dortmund, Barcelona, uh, PSG and uh, Porto, Real Madrid, Manchester City, Bayern Munich and Juventus. I would actually say Porto is the one that many would like to have. I think there's no, 
no great, great, great question about that. And then the nuclear options out of pot two. Clearly, Atletico Madrid is one that you don't want to play. Uh, Tottenham is one that you don't want to play. Liverpool is one that you don't want to play. So those are two teams right off the bat. Uh, a little bit tighter. Uh, Schalke, I think, will be a dream draw, except that, for instance, if I look at Bayern, they will not be able to play against Schalke. Although it's really a... I find it so stupid that in the sec second round they still have the, cup, the country lines. I think if they got rid of that, uh, it would make the draw procedure a lot more straightforward. Uh, and then you have Roma. I think many people will look at Roma and say, yeah, we would like to have that. I am personally hoping for a Porto Roma matchup. Uh, there was something there related to qualification where Porto actually eliminated Roma. Uh, Lyon, also another team that I think many would have. Ajax is still Ajax and United are, are, are teams that I think you would rather avoid in a way. But yeah. Uh, that's the Champions League group phase. I hope the draw will not. I honestly don't want too many ma ma matchups that seem like finals, not like a Real Madrid PSG matchup. I want to have this a little bit more even because I want to see big ma matchups in the quarterfinal, not necessarily in the uh, second round already. But let's see how it will go. Uh, tonight is Europa League. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to that one. Uh, Nationally here in Austria, the big one is of course going to beat against the Rangers. Uh, that that game could save the season for Rapid, who have a horrible season uh, domestically, but you know, they just need a point against the Rangers and it seems doable. But I might be completely off that. Uh, probably Range Rangers will get a, a dirty win against Rapid. Because it would be just so fitting. Uh, just in case you haven't, you're not following Austrian soccer, and I assume that um, Rapid played 0 0 to Sturm Graz at home and were, in, uh, and were complaining about the pitch, their home pitch. The coach was saying uh, we should put way more money to get a nice pitch because we are, we are the ones to play nice soccer and you, you don't even know where the ball is going. So, Weird stuff, absolutely weird, weird stuff. Uh, of course, I hope that Milan gets the point at Olympiakos. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous. I think they can even lose one nil, but still, uh, honestly, a little bit nervous about that one. Uh, I don't trust Milan that much. Uh, and I think there are many other. I don't even wanna. I, th I cannot even go, but there are many other interesting uh, groups that hardly that has not much decided. Of course, at the zone they will put a big uh, emphasis on Lazio against Eintracht, which is uh, there's nothing to play for any anymore. So I, I, it seems like well, that seems a bit stupid. Well, let me know your thoughts on yesterday's Champions League games. Uh, but who do you think in the draw will be desirable teams and teams to be avoided? As I said. I think except for Porto, no one wants to play any of the top one teams, I'm sure. Although Real Madrid, honestly, it seems preposterous, but maybe Real Madrid is a, is a team that people would slightly wish for. But we gotta see how it goes. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more of these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!